Hello, I'm Derek Mitchell, President of the National Democratic Institute, NDI. I'm honored to address the Kalinowski Forum at a pivotal moment for the future of Belarus. I'd like to thank the Lithuanian Parliament, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and other partners for organizing this incredibly timely event. I'm recording this message several days before you'll see it. Much may have changed in Belarus between now and then. Events on the ground are moving quickly. But let's be clear, whatever happens in the coming days and weeks, a democratic spirit has taken hold and is moving across that country, and Belarus will never be the same again. Belarusians are in the streets because they're outraged by violence, including torture of citizens at the hands of state security services and a brazen attempt to call a rigged election fair. But they're also in the streets because they found solidarity around the causes of justice, integrity, and rights. This new movement indeed is remarkable for its diversity and inclusiveness. It features women, young people, pensioners, factory workers, technology professionals, artists, journalists, students, and athletes coming from every corner of Belarus. The country is united in a way it has never been before. The movement is also noteworthy for its peacefulness and creativity. It has emerged organically with music, flags, flowers, colors, videos, honking horns, and humor carrying the message. NDI Chairman Madeleine Albright often says that it took her a long time to find her voice. And now that she has found it, she's not going to be silent. The same can be said of Belarusians today. They found their voices. They won't be silent. NDI, alongside so many fellow international organizations, stands with the Belarusian people. We stand with them in their demand for democracy and freedom, free association, free assembly, free speech, and free elections. Some would have us believe that Belarusians must make a choice between democracy and sovereignty, that these two principles are mutually exclusive. I'd argue the opposite. Belarus will best protect its independence by allowing citizens to exercise their democratic rights. When a government has the legitimacy of public support, they're at their strongest and most resilient. Those of us in the international community have an obligation to support Belarusians' democratic aspirations. That includes demanding the end of state violence against peaceful protesters and the release of all political prisoners, insisting on a new election conducted fairly and with monitoring from credible domestic and international organizations, and supporting those Belarusians who have earned the public's trust in recent months through their integrity and courage. The principle that people should have a say in how they're governed, that a government should be accountable to its people, transparent in its actions, and inclusive of all citizens, these are basic values of human dignity. They are also values of democracy. Thus, it is important that those who believe in principles of freedom and democracy stand together in solidarity across borders to promote and defend these values, to protect them at every turn, peacefully, against those who would attack or reject them. Belarus is at the vanguard of a great global struggle in which millions of others are also engaged. It is a struggle that transcends cultural or historical context to embrace basic human yearnings. Belarusians should know that, even as many of us watch from afar, they're not alone. Free people everywhere stand with them. I wish you all a successful conference, and we look forward to working with all of you to realize the promise of a more democratic Belarus.